I'm Nevin Wickers. I'm going to talk about how a mathematical concept can help people in the future. So this is a problem that I'm very interested in working on later, and it's, it involves artificial intelligence. So at the rate that artificial intelligence is improving, it's likely that at some point it's going to outperform humans. We call this smarter than human AI. A smarter than human artificial intelligence is going to do better than humans in any cognitive task, even tasks like writing poetry or persuading people. So when the artificial intelligence gets to that point where it is better than humans in cognitive tasks, then it's going to be able to shape the future and fulfill its goals more than humans will be able to do. We can see this in how humans have such control over the world because of our intelligence. Given this, it's very important that the artificial intelligence that is created in the future has goals that are favorable to humans. So there are many problems that have to be solved in order to get a safe artificial intelligence that has goals that humans approve of in the future. One of these problems is about the artificial intelligence designing a successor. A successor is an artificial intelligence that is smarter than the current one and better at fulfilling its goals. It's very important when the artificial intelligence designs a, a successor that the successor is going to be able to have the same goals as the current artificial intelligence as well as act on them in the same way. For this problem, we're assuming that the problem of how to give an artificial intelligence a good goal in the first place has already been solved, but I'm going to talk about some other important implications to this problem that make, the, that make it more difficult than it might seem. So there's an important mathematical theorem that leads to some implications for this. That theorem is called Lobb's theorem. Lobb's theorem also has some interesting implications for mathematics. One, one of the things that you would want to do in mathematics is show that a mathematical proof of a certain statement means that that statement is actually true. So we can write that down using the box symbol to represent a proof. So what we would like to show is that a proof that a certain statement, let's call it x, implies that x is actually true. This would be nice to, tr to show because we prove things in mathematics all the time, meaning that we show that a statement follows from a certain set of axioms. And we would like to be able to show that if we prove something, then that statement is actually true. So we can write that down by saying that we want to be able to prove, using another box symbol, we want to be able to prove that a proof of x means that x is actually true. However, Lobb's theorem shows that if we have proved this statement here, then that implies that x, that the statement x actually has a proof. So the problem with this is that it means that we can't prove that a proof of very simple statements mean that they are true. I'll show you what I mean with the example of addition. So with addition, we would want to show, we would want a way to show that a proof, that two numbers, we'll call them A and B, add together to make, a third, to make a third number C. So we want to show that a proof of this statement means that A plus B does actually equal C. However, according to Lobb's theorem, if we have proven this statement, then that implies that there is a proof that a plus b does actually equal c. So there is a proof of this statement. 
The problem with this is that we can plug in any numbers to A, B, and C and have the statement be true. So we would want a way to show that if somehow, since we're writing A plus B equals C down for the general case, we would want a way to show that if we somehow proved a statement such as 1 plus 3 equaled 7, that implied that 1 plus 3 actually equaled 7. But the problem is that this would show that this part seems fine because we obviously can't actually prove that 1 plus 3 does actually equal 7. So it won't matter if that would imply that 1 plus 3 equals 7. But the problem comes in here where proving this part implies that we would have a proof that 1 plus 3 equals 7. Now, since we obviously can't have a proof of this, it shows that we can't actually prove that a proof of addition means that addition is true for the general case. So this shows that mathematics is limited in its ability to show that a proof of a, of a particular statement means that the statement is true. So now I'll go back to what this actually has to do with what I was talking about before with the artificial intelligence. So back to the artificial intelligence successor problem, the artificial, the original artificial intelligence would want a way to show that its successor will be safe. So an intuitive way that it could do that is the original artificial intelligence could reason that its successor will only choose actions that it proves to be a good action. A good action meaning something that humans would approve of and has positive consequences for us. So we can write that as the artificial intelligence is assuming that a successor will prove, only take actions that it proves to be good and then if the artificial intelligence proves that an action is good then the action will actually be good. We can write that as a proof that the successor artificial intelligence it has a good action. I'll use G to represent a good action. So proof that an action is good implies that that action is actually good. And the current artificial intelligence is trying to prove this. So it wants to prove that the artificial intelligence proving an action being good implies that that action actually is good. The problem is that according to Lobb's theorem, since the statement here with the good actions is the same as this one in Lobb's theorem, this shows that that means the artificial intelligence has actually proved that an action is in fact good. The problem with this is similar to the problem with mathematics here, where in this way the artificial intelligence would have shown that any arbitrary action is a good action, including things that are obviously horrible, for example, destroying the world or killing people. So the artificial intelligence would know that that actually, obviously, it can't have a proof that actions like that are good, so it won't be able to use this line of reasoning. Now, this is a problem that people have found ways to work around, but it is still a problem that requires more work to have more robust solutions to. So it's one of the areas that more research on is needed in order to make an artificial intelligence that will be safe to humans. So. Now, um, so to summarize what I've told you, I've talked about how I've explained Lobb's theorem and how that shows that a proof of proving a certain statement implying that that statement is true means that you actually have a proof of the original statement. And then I've shown that that has some interesting implications for mathematics and it limits how we can prove that a proof of a statement means that it is true. I've also shown that this has some implications for creating a safe artificial intelligence because the artificial intelligence can't reason 
that a successor will only take actions that it proves to be good, and then the successor proving that an action is good implies that that action is actually good. Now, the, I think this is, will be relevant to your life or your children's lives, because if a safe artificial intelligence does get created that will create the kind of future that humans want, then it will be partly due to a solution to this problem. If this interests you, then I encourage you to either pursue artificial intelligence research yourself or donate to an organization that is pursuing artificial intelligence research, such as MIRI. So now I've shown you some mathematics that could help people in the future. I hope you use that wisely. Thank you.